Hello, my name is Brian White. I am the Enablement Specialist at Veritas Technologies, and I'm here to talk to you today about ransomware. It's not a pretty subject, but it's costing companies billions and billions of dollars every day. And ransomware attacks are happening every few seconds across the globe. Hopefully you have not been affected by it, but you probably know someone who has. If you think about ransomware, it affects employee data, customer data, and the actual business data that you have in order to grow and run your business. Take the Colonial Pipeline, for instance. That ransomware attack affected the southeast part of the United States, and millions and millions of people were affected by that. Think about local governments, hospitals, all are being hit by ransomware attacks, and that's not a good thing. So if you're thinking about it, there's a couple of things you have to do to help mitigate ransomware attacks. First, you have to educate your employees to be able to identify things that could cause a ransomware attack to affect your business. The other thing that you want to have is inline antivirus protection. You want things to be able to detect different anomalies that are happening across your networks. And then the third thing, you want to make sure your data is encrypted and you have some type of secure login to access your network and your data. But there's a last line of defense that many people don't even think about, a backup. Veritas has many backup solutions, but today I'm talking about Veritas's backup exec. It's a simple, secure, and unified solution to protect your data. Now, backup exec has a lot of different security features in it, but I wanna talk about the ransomware resilience piece. And what that does, we protect your data in two ways. The first way, is whenever you send a backup job to an on-disk location, we lock that backup data down. That way, the only thing that can modify, delete, move, encrypt that data is a backup exec process. Nobody else can. And then you say, Brian, well, what if it's a backup exec process that I actually come in and infiltrate? Well, we can block you from that too. Because we thought of that. We're kind of thinking of everything for you. Right? So we protect your data in two ways. The on-disk location is locked down and the backup exec processes are actually locked down so nobody can come in and imitate backup exec to protect that data. So you're saying, Brian, it all sounds good, but how's it actually look? Well, you're in for a treat because I actually have the good folks at Tech Data at the Cyber Range. They ran a ransomware attack on backup exec. And I'm going to take you on a tour of it. So this is the Backup Exec UI. Uh, the good folks at Tech Data's Cyber Range uh, installed Backup Exec on a Windows, I believe a 2012 server, and they initiated this ransomware attack that we're gonna walk through here, okay? So the regular BE server's there, installed, and as you can see here, they're opening up the BE data folder. This is where the ransomware resilience is enabled by default on a Backup Exec server. Now, they disabled it and they added a file called ransomware attack to show you once they enabled it, again, you're not able to delete, move, modify any of the data that's in this folder. Now, this is where the ransomware resilience is important because when you send backup data to disk, this is what protects your server from ransomware attacks. You cannot delete that data, remove that data or anything, or you can open the files themselves but you can't make any changes to the files when the ransomware resilience is enabled on the server. So, so as they move through here, looking at a few of the files, they proceed into the backup exec server and the UI again, and now they're going to look at the backup exec settings. So by default, the ransomware resilience is turned on. And you, as an end user, would have to go in and click here and disable it. See the disk storage lockdown setting. It's on by default. And if you disable it, which you can, right? We have a way to make sure we know who's disabling it because what we do is we do ask for authorization on the server. As you see here, they're looking for some admin rights to go in and make this modification or this change on the server. Again, by default, it's on and it locks down the backup disk storage. You can turn it off, but there is an audit log trail. So if someone does turn it off, you are able to find out who did it, at least what 
login credentials they utilize to make the change. Okay? So the backup server, the data, the backup data is secure. So now they're going to prep to run the ransomware attack. Again, shout out to the cyber range of tech data. Here are some files that are PDF files. As you can see, these are just some test files that they have there. But these files will be changed once the ransomware attack happens to .lol. So it's going to disrupt the entire server by modifying number of files to the .lol. Now the goal is for this file, the folder for back of the ZEC, nothing there actually will change. No LOL files or anything will be affected from the ransomware attack. So now they're going to go and they're going to execute their uh, homegrown ransomware attack. Okay, there are a few different things that you'll be able to see as the ransomware attack happens. But what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward. Right. So I don't want to sit and wait for how long it goes through it and protect uh, does the ransomware attack on the server. We're just going to fast forward to a few places. Right. So as you can see here, uh, fast forward it. You still open up some files just to see things are changing. And as we get to a point, uh, he's going to open up some files and you're going to see a new key file. So you see that key file It's a text file. What that means is the ransomware attack is happening and that key is the retrieval key. So that's the key that people will need to have to you know, basically get the data back unencrypted. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty interesting. So now we're going to fast forward a little bit more because the ransomware attack is still happening on the server and we don't want to just sit there and wait all this time. But I do want you to see how things are happening on the server. And so now, there we go, some LOLs, LOL files have changed. So that means the ransomware attack is happening. It is affecting files, but hmm, what's happened to the BE files? Let's see. It's moving a little slow because that attack is happening. But look at there, the backup exec files, the backup folders, the backup files that's there, they haven't been changed. And also the file that they created hasn't been changed either, right? So it seems that everything in there is protected. You can still open the file. Let's see you open it. <laughs> still moving slow. But those files are not being changed at all right now. So it's pretty slick right there. Oh, there it is. So the file can open up. So it's not being affected at all by the ransomware attack. Now, see, so still pulling up other files. You still see those those files, uh, LOL. They're still being affected, and other files are still being affected on the server. But the idea is the backup exec data, the backup folders, the backup disk storage content is not being affected. So let's fast forward a little bit here as we're moving faster through the ransomware attack and. We're fast forwarding because we want to make sure that you see everything that's happening on the server. OK. And so now as we get to a point, he, the backup exec data is still intact, but you see LOL for the other files. So that ransomware attack is still happening, but the backup exec data is safe. Right. So if you need to restore, that's really what's important. So, oh, there we go. Now we have a completion of the ransomware attack. So as you can see here, <laughs> this server is infected and there's a time remaining of 23 hours, about 24 hours that they have to respond to their ransom of what? 69 Bitcoins. So with those 69 Bitcoins, that's the only way they're going to get the ransomware key to get that server back. Did y'all just see that? Now, how many people want to pay 69 Bitcoins to get their data back? I need a drink. Ooh, thank you. Ah, that's refreshing. And it's also refreshing to have backup exec in place where as you can see, the backup exec data was not affected. There were other files that were changed to .lol, but the backup disk data stayed the same. 
And even when they put an external file in the location of backup is X data, it couldn't be changed either. We simply lock down your data to protect it from ransomware attacks where you don't have to pay 69 bitcoins. Now, you could take it from me or you could take it from some of our customers. United Way of Pierce County, they were hit by a ransomware attack and they were able to hit the red button to restore all their data. In IEPC in Kuwait, they were hit with a ransomware attack at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> they weren't too happy to get all those notifications, but they were happy that Backup Exec was able to restore their data before their business started the next day. Didn't have to pay the ransom, continue running their business, continue growing their revenue. Now, if you want to learn more about what Backup Exec can do, go to BackupExec.com. Download it for free. Try it for 60 days and see how much you like Backup Exec and see how simple it is, see how secure it is, and see how unified it is that can protect you against ransomware attacks. Now, from me to you, I hope that you be healthy, be safe, be ransomware resilient, and just be. Backup Exec is there to help you with ransomware protections. I'm Brian White. Thank you for your time.